I arrived from Liverpool on Merseyside in September the 8th, 1977, and um, came, flew straight through from London, LA, Fiji, straight through to Auckland, and in them days it was Auckland, Wellington, Christchurch, Dunedin, so you had to do four or five stops. So we got to Dunedin, I didn't know what to expect, to tell the truth, and it was a, uh, it was a culture shock. It was small, very quiet, shops were closed on a Saturday, which was foreign to me, and it was, uh, it was, it was, it was very, very much different from what I'd ever been used to. John Adset, who had just become the manager, came to Dunedin City training session, and not knowing a great deal about the, the New Zealand setup in um, international side of it, he, he asked would I be interested in being involved. I'd been there for three years and um, been eligible to become a citizen. It was an unknown quantity, actually, because you know you, you'd look back in the history books, and it was always Australia that beat New Zealand, and it was very, very low key. So to play for New Zealand at that stage wasn't a, wasn't a big thing. I'd come over to play football, played for uh, Dunedin City, um, enjoyed it, and then um, when John was talking, and he said we're playing Fiji, and I've never been to Fiji, playing Indonesia, never been to Indonesia, Australia. Um, Taiwan and it was just a, it was an event what started out was an adventure and just to see what happens you know I used to watch cricket in the UK quite passionately and to play in the Sydney cricket ground play football it was sort of whoa and we got changed in one of the old stands and it was it was pretty special and pretty special we played on the Monday I think we went in on this the, the Friday or the Saturday but when it comes to the crunch we I don't know if there's a bit of jet lag or the humidity, but we started to run out of, you know, Ricky Herbert would be the fittest pit player you'd ever seen in our squad. Um, he, he started struggling. And if Ricky's struggling, the rest of us haven't got much, much going for us. And we, you know, we just held him out. It's just the dreams come true. Uh, but at that stage, you didn't know what the dream was going to be because it was six months down the track. Uh, further on, but it was just a case of we'd made the World Cup. You know, I'd grown up, played soccer or football all my life. To come to a new country, play for a new country, and uh, you know, proud, proud to be here and um, to qualify for the World Cup. And then when the draw comes out, you're playing Brazil. You know, Brazil, Russia, and Scotland. What more could you ask for? Sumner pushing forward to Turner, turning it to Wooden on the edge of the area. Wooden shot is there! And that is Steve Wooden with a brilliant goal! Turner, a nice ball onto Mackay. Mackay nicely into Wooden. There's the lethal left foot, and it's there! A great shot from Wooden! A great shot from Wooden, it's the lethal left foot! Mackay chipping on, not offside is Wooden, flicks it across, and that must be in the net, New Zealand 1-0! Calling for both. Both to Wooden. Wooden's on side. This will be a chance. There's a shot, and it's in the net. And that's as good a goal as you'll see. Harmon flicking on. Oh, here's Wooden left clear down through the middle. Can Wooden control it? Puts it past goalkeeper. 1-0 New Zealand. Steve Sumner, well won. Good tackle by Mayouf, but the pressure is still on. Out by Walid. And a fine goal! Oh, brilliant goal by Steve Wooden. Brilliant goal. Within towards Rufa, headed down for Woodin. Can it come to his left foot? It does. Oh, it's in! Steve Woodin has scored and it's 3 0 to New Zealand. What was the goalkeeper thinking of then? But who really cares? Steve Wooden, good chance, and that's the goal. Steve Wooden has opened the scoring. And here's Woodin again. If the ball will stay for him, and he puts it. 